Is Shane Wright ready? Plus, Chandler Stevenson finally chimes in about joining the Seattle Kraken. You are Locked On Kraken, your daily podcast on the Seattle Kraken. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, hey, what do you say, Seattle hockey fans? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Kraken, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We bring you your favorite team every single day. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Erica L. Ayala. I have been your host here of Locked On Kraken since the very beginning. I am also a contributor at CBS Sports, and I'm here with CBS Sports at the National Association for Hispanic Journalists Conference. It's the 40th conference ever. We're having a good time here in L.A. And because I'm here in L.A., I was actually able to catch up with some mutuals of the Locked On Podcast Network. That is in the big industry business style. And I want to tell you a little bit more about that. But first, today's episode of Locked On Kraken brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Now, you got to make sure to download the Game Time app, create your account, and then you can use that promo code Locked On NHL to get $20 off your first purchase. I tell you, I use Game Time all the time. And I'm here in LA. And you know who else is here in LA? The M's are here, the Mariners, that's right. And I've already recruited, I think, some of my CBS folks to probably head over to that M's game. But I told you I'm here at a conference. I actually got to catch up with our partner in Tegna. Now, if you have been an everydayer and an OGer, then you know that I talked about the Tegna team before. And actually, while we were here at the conference, Tegna and the Seattle Kraken made an announcement. They are expanding their coverage yet again. I guess... I should probably uh, just fall back for just a minute because I should mention that Tegna is the new regional broadcast partner for the Seattle Kraken. We've talked about that on the show, how now the Locked On uh, Kraken show and, of course, the Locked On company overall, we're a part of Tegna. Tegna is the regional broadcast partner of the Seattle Kraken. And so we're hoping that that will mean great things for the show moving forward. Nothing we can say, probably not until after the Olympic break, uh, because a lot of the Tegna people at King actually are going to be locked in, if you will, (laughs) on that, which makes total sense, as will I, your host of Locked on Kraken. But Tegna and Seattle Kraken have partnered with Gray Media in Alaska. Now, what that means is that they are expanding that regional Um, and locally available Kraken broadcast to approximately, um, well, we talked about this part, approximately 70 regular season games each year on King 5, Kong, but then also now KGW in Portland, KREM, KSKN in in, uh, Washington, and they have other Washington, Oregon, and Alaska partners they are expecting to bring on board. We couldn't be more excited or more proud to partner with Tegna and Gray Media to expand our broadcast reach into Anchorage and Juneau. Uh, the, we've built an incredible relationship with the hockey community in Alaska over the years. I loved some of the trips that we've seen Everett go on. You might remember that we had Zoe Hickel on the show when she became part of the Coachella Valley Firebirds and like their community arm, kind of what Kyle Boyd, I believe, does for the Seattle Kraken. Uh, So this is super exciting. And it's so wild because I got to meet some Tegna people while here at this conference. I got to speak to some people directly related with King 5. And again, my hope is that we continue these conversations as Locked on Kraken. I, as your host of Locked on Kraken, and of course with the Locked on Podcast Network, so we can bring you not just your favorite team every single day, but maybe some really fun and unique Uh, kind of content. So stay tuned. We're working on it. And I guess great question of the day is let me know everydayers and OGers, what content would you like to see for this show locked on Kraken? We got a, a, I think a pretty solid one here. We're going to talk about Shane Wright. He was recently on a Canadian radio program. We're going to talk about Chandler Stevenson, who gave an interview to the NHL PA, the Players Association. I am going to give you my December games to watch or my game to watch and break down the December uh, 
schedule for the Seattle Kraken. Speaking of schedules, the Coachella Valley Firebirds schedule has come out. But I also want to spend some time, you know, it's a Firebirds Friday, but I mean, what day in the last month or so hasn't been mostly about the Firebirds. But I want to talk about not just the Kraken roster, but also the Firebirds roster. So it's a jam-packed show. I'm super excited. Let's get into Shane Wright. He was on, again, a Canadian hockey program. The The show is called... Um, is called First Up, and I was able to listen to his interview. Uh, Shane, we've had on Locked on Crack, and you may remember we had a little technical difficulty, so he was a little tilted <laughs> at first, which I thought was hilarious, but he's a really great person to interview, someone we want to have on the show again, and in this interview, he was very, you know, forthcoming. Of course, he got, you know, ribbed a little bit for going to the finals two years in a row, but losing two years in a row. And of course, you know, he made a joke at his own expense and at the team's expense, but of course was able to just talk about what that experience meant. And I thought he gave some great quotes about getting, getting that experience, but also leaning into the opportunity to learn what it takes to win when you're in those situations. Um, and so I, I also liked what he had to say of course, about Disco Dan Bilesma. Um, I know what he likes and the style of player he wants me to be. So I want to be able to go into training camp and show them, the coaching staff, that show them that and show that I deserve a spot on the team. To be able to have a coach like that who I have a relationship with and a connection with and who I really enjoyed playing for is definitely huge. So yes, Shane Wright is all about making this jump, making this transition. Again, he talked about learning also the tough part of losing in a championship game. We're learning what it takes to actually get over that finish line and to be able to win and to close out games. And you know, we talked about that a lot when it came to the Firebirds, but of course, at times, more often than not last season with the Seattle Kraken as well. Definitely two experiences that really helped me and ones that I'll be able to lean on moving forward. Now, Shane also had a great philosophy that he actually got from some of the veterans he's been able to be around, whether that's with Coachella Valley or the Seattle Kraken. And that is to take some time off his feet to rest his body. And I absolutely love that because what he says in the interview on the radio program is that, yeah, we got to the final game of the season, two seasons in a row. That's a lot. Even though he's a 20 year old, that's still a, a, a lot on your body. So he's leaning into or has leaned into taking time away. Of course, he talked about playing golf, um, but now getting a little bit back into hockey activities. If you listen to Locked on NHL, again, I told you on yesterday's episode, which sidebar, I apologize. In my infinite wisdom, I scheduled that premiere for today instead of for yesterday. So you got two shows, some of you, to watch for today. Uh, so Locked on Kraken will be your first and your second listen or watch of the day. Anyway, apologies, mea culpa. Um, moving on. <laughs> um, I asked Daryl Watts on the Women's Hockey Spotlight that very question. I, I just think it's really interesting to see how hockey players approach the offseason. So I kind of teased this up in the open and with our thumbnail for this episode on YouTube, is Shane Wright ready? I think he's as ready as he's ever been to make a compelling case to make this team. And again, coming up next on the show, I'm going to go through a uh, daily face off and also sound of hockey and go through some of the analysis that they have when it comes to line combinations and things of that nature and see where a lot of people are expecting Shane Wright to be. But before we do that, I also want to tap in with Chandler Stevenson. Now, I know some people have been getting on Chandler a little bit, perhaps, you know, in the deep, dark spaces of the interwebs uh, for really not kind of talking a little bit more about being with the Seattle Kraken. And, you know, after seeing this interview with the NHLPA, again, let me just pull back the curtain. There are times where I'll interview a player and that story for one reason or another won't go up immediately after I interview them. Maybe we're scheduling it for something specific. Um, maybe, you know, there's just some news that pushes that back if it's not, you know, a timely or urgent thing. And also, as I just mentioned, it's the off season. And at least in Stevenson's case, you know, they have two young children. They have Ford and a three-month-old Nellie. 
And uh, they talk specifically, or Chandler in this article talks about his son, who is big into sea creatures and how uh, they're, uh, you know, giving their children the opening kind of, so the, the, the whole ice performance, whatever you want to call it, that happens before cracking games and that his family is super into it. His children are super into it. So can't wait for them to get to Climate Pledge Arena and experience that. But for me in reading that, you've got young children, you're getting some time off. He is also familiar with making deep runs into the playoffs. So I mean, it's an off season. Yes, this is a part of your job. And ah, I kind of get it. We've also got folks getting married. <laughs> of course, Jared McCann's wedding, I believe it was, over the weekend or uh, I guess a couple of days ago. So, you know, I, I don't know. For me, I kind of put that to the back burner. But here is what Stevenson did say. When you play them, talking about the Seattle Kraken, they are all over you. You have two guys on you, and as soon as you touch the puck, you pass it to a teammate, and then they have two guys on them. They are relentless. And, of course, in the article, it talks about the Winter Classic because Stevenson was on the Vegas Golden Knights. Now, the Vegas Golden Knights, the last, uh, you know, they didn't always get shocked, if you will, thunderstruck, if you will, by us. But that's another story for another day. We've actually already talked about that. But I like that he's talking about the relentless play. Most guys, when they come to a new team, are going to find something nice to say, right, about the team that they're coming to. And a part of that, maybe it is real. Maybe it's just a part of, you know, the process. But I liked that this is what Stevenson said about the Seattle Kraken. You already know if you're an everydayer, if you're an OGer. When we are playing fast, which we know Dan Balsmo wants to do, when we are forechecking, and I add the third F, when we're having fun, we are the best version of the Seattle Kraken. So I love that Chandler Stevenson pointed that out. Um, and, you know, he also talks about what the process is like. It is the off season, but when you're moving to a different team, it's all about processing everything, packing up, going to a new city and finding a place to live, establishing roots. But when you do think about the season, you definitely get excited about it. So yes, Chandler Stevenson excited to come to Seattle, not quite here yet, but is getting his family prepared and is hopefully going to be ready to contribute to that relentless style of Seattle Kraken hockey that we are expecting. As I mentioned, we have a jam-packed show. So coming up next, I want to take you through some roster projections, including what this whole roster overhaul could mean for the Coachella Valley Firebirds. We'll get into that coming up on Locked on Kraken. Today's episode of Locked on Kraken brought to you by Game Time. I literally was on Game Time the other day. I know I mentioned it a few times this week, and I was like, ah, I don't know if I'm going to have time while I'm in L.A. to see if I can make a baseball game, even though I'm not too far from Echo Park. Well, far enough. But anyway, the point is I can get to a Dodgers game. And then I look up on Game Time, and I saw tickets to the series against the Mariners for like, 15 bucks and less than 10 in some areas. And I'm here with some work colleagues. We are going to start winding down our conference. And so what better way to just enjoy the rest of our time, get to know each other a little bit more. We went on a hike to the Hollywood sign that was actually covered in fog. Whole nother story. Anyway, so we want to do something fun. And I immediately went to game time to find the best deals, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And yeah, I do think some of us are going to go check out the M's. I mean, I guess at Dodger Stadium. But hey, this is the Locked on Kraken podcast. You know, I hold it down for Seattle. So if you want flash deals, if you want to buy tickets where you can take a look at the view from your seats before you purchase. If you want to buy somewhere where you have the 110% money back if you find a better deal, then you want to go to Game Time. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Again, that is promo code L O C K E D O N. NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Make sure you download that game time app. You won't regret it. 
Thanks, as always, for making Locked on Kraken a part of your daily destination. We, of course, are your first listen every day. I told you there was a little hiccup with scheduling, so you can have a bonus episode or just two episodes, whatever you want. We talked about the November schedule yesterday. Uh, we got into some really cool things with regard to, of course, Jessica Campbell. So you're probably going to want to check that out. But also... I want to let you know, go check out Locked on NHL. I already mentioned that it's one of our women's hockey spotlights. I talked to Daryl Watts, who went from PWHL Ottawa, where she was a top three scorer, the top goal scorer in her first season there, but is coming back home to Toronto. So learn a little bit more about Daryl Watts by heading over after this show to Locked on NHL. And you get a little bit more of me alongside Rachel and Gil. All right. Roster projections. Now, this is always, you know, something that, if I'm being honest, I'm an eye test gal. I like to see what everything looks like, who's skating well, what the vibes are before I create any roster uh, and line combos. But I think, you know, if you've been listening to the show, that there is an absolute line combination that I want to see. And, uh, you know, I think it's going to be interesting to see if we can keep the line uh, with um, with Yanni Gord centering, of course, Oliver Bjorkstrand and Ellie Tolvanen together. Now, I do think we need a little more from Yanni, and I think we'll get it. I think there just seemed to be a little bit of a fatigue from Yanni Gord, not surprisingly, because Yanni was putting in a lot of work. But I like Yanni centering Tolvanen and Bjorkstrand. And when you go head to daily face-off, that's exactly what they have as that third line combination. Now, we'll go from left to right in these um, projections, but we're thinking that Jared McCann goes back to the wing. Now, I mentioned Chandler Stevenson, but with having Chandler Stevenson and assuming everyone else is going to be healthy, that should mean that Jared McCann can move back to the wing. And if you listen to our show from a few days ago where I broke down fantasy hockey and everyone's saying Jared McCann, you know, he led us in scoring. If he can stay healthy, he's taken some unfortunately egregious hits um, that were, you know, laid out by our opponents over time and we don't have to get too much into it. So my blood pressure doesn't go too high, but if we can protect Jared McCann and if we can keep him on the wing, I do think the sky can be the limit for McCann. So he would be working with Beneers and Eberly. I like that combo as well, but I really like the Tolvan and Gord Bjorkstrand line, especially because I don't know that we have seen the ceiling, the peak. I don't think we have with McCann, Beneers, and Eberly either, but it's just a little bit of a different scenario. Bjorkstrand got moved around a lot. Tolvanen seemed a little uh, trigger shy, uh, you know, uh, at times, but we'll see what they can do. That second line, though, according to Daily Faceoff or the projections that they're making, is going to be Jaden Schwartz, Chandler Stevenson, and Andre Burke. Burakovsky. Now, uh, if if Stevenson can be an effective skater, if he can bring that fast, uh, you know, we talked to, of course, Armando Velez about <laughs> that Montour can flat out skate, which I love. And I hear, you know, Chandler Stevenson, not too bad himself. Uh, and I think that might really open things up for Andre Burakovsky. Now, Jaden Sh- Schwartz, again, our guys over at Locked On Fantasy Hockey alluded to this. We know he's susceptible to injury. So is Berkey. So those two on a line together, if they can stay healthy, I love it. And we unfortunately just haven't seen that yet. And then that leads us to the fourth line. Shane Wright centering Ty Cartier and Brandon Tanev. So there you go. Shane Wright with an opportunity for fourth line minutes. I like that he could have some time with Ty Cartier. And Brandon Tanev is just, I mean, he's turbo. So the energy that you could potentially get from that line might bring us to Seattle Kraken uh, lines, fourth lines of yesteryear, where they really are the energy. They are the freaking juice at times for our offense. And I think they can do that by how they skate. So that's going to be interesting. Defensive pairings per daily faceoff. Vince Dunn and Adam Larson, if it ain't broke, why fix it? I'm, the, I'm here for that. Jamie Alexiak and Brandon Montour. I think that one's going to be interesting. I'm not sure Alexiak would be my first go-to. But again, if you want to keep Riker Evans on that left side, which Daily Faceoff does, then you have Will Borgen on the right. So, uh, you know, Alexiak 
and Montour, if he really can skate the way, uh, you know, Vela, uh, Armando, excuse me, I said Velas, Armando says, then I don't know if Alexiak is necessarily the partner, but you could also see that maybe that's good. They have um, different skill sets that can be useful thinking on the defensive side specifically. First power play unit, Montour is on there. And the second power play unit, you see Shane Wright. First penalty kill um, is Larson, Oleksiak, Oleksiak, excuse me, Gord, and Tanev, while the second unit includes the newcomer Stevenson with McCann, Dunn, and Borgen. Uh, and then Phil Grubauer and Joy Decord. The way they have it listed, I'm assuming they think Ruby might be the starter. I don't know if that's the assumption I'm going to make. That's why I'm excited to go to training camp. Something else I want to mention, and we'll probably talk about this on another Firebirds Friday, a little bit closer to training camp, but I loved an article that we saw up on The Sound of Hockey, the guys always doing great work. It's entitled Understanding the AHL Veteran Rule and Its Impact on the Coachella Valley Firebirds, and I thought this was interesting, and it also laid out, I uh, alluded to some of this, but there are some players that have moved on, including Potsy. Andrew Potorowski didn't mention that the other day, signed with San Jose. Cameron Hughes was someone else I thought could potentially be a good fit for the organization, but has signed with Dallas. Connor Carrick with Edmonton, Devin Shore with Minnesota, Jimmy Schultz with San Jose, and Cole Lint, a tough one, uh, in Dallas. Studenich, uh, Petman, Renke, and Ian McKinnon, all free agents. And so what is the roster going to look like? Um, but first, I just want to talk about this veteran kind of exempt status. I'm not going to get into it too much, but here are the cliff notes, the bullet points. A minimum of 12 skaters that have had uh, fewer than 260 professional games um, as development players, a maximum of one skater that has fewer than 320 professional games as a veteran is a veteran exempt player and a maximum of five skaters that have played over 320 professional games. That is a veteran player. And you have to keep the balance in all of these categories um, because at its core, the AHL is a development league. And again, if you want more details, I would head over to sound of hockey, great article up. So what will the roster look like or what does it look like? Now, we've talked about some of the signings, um, you know, of course, the captain. Not of course, you never know. I mean, we lost our captain after uh, the first season. Hello. Anyway, veteran status, uh, Gustav Olofsson, John Hayden, Max McCormick, uh, Mitchell Stevens, um, Kill Flurry veteran exempt, and then those who fall into the development category, Jacob Mellison, Logan Morrison, Morrison, Luke Henman, Leighton Road, Ryan Winterton, Tucker Robertson, VA Ovinen, Ottavinen, excuse me, uh, Jagger Fergus, David Goyette, Yanni Neiman, Ty Nelson, Ben Myers, and Brandon B. Rowe. Um, so we're starting to see that some of the young guys who we've been seeing in development camp for the last handful of years at least according to Sound of Hockey, have a really good chance to be on this roster. Now, nothing is guaranteed until training camp, Sound of Hockey writes, but Riker Evans and Shane Wright appeared poised to make the Kraken full-time in 24-25. Assuming Mahura, Wright, and Evans are on the Kraken roster, then that's the roster that Sound of Hockey is expecting the Firebirds to go with. But again, we won't know anything until training camp, and I, for one, am very excited to see how it all plays out. Coming up next, I'm going to give you a rundown of the December schedule for the Seattle Kraken. It's another doozy of a, of a month for the Seattle Kraken, and I'll let you know what I think of it and what is my game of the month. Coming up on Locked on Kraken.
Thanks, as always, for making Locked on Kraken a part of your daily destination because we bring you your favorite team every single day. Want to shout out to our producer behind the scenes, Seth Tuple, has been doing a great job and is our host of Locked on Minnesota Wild. And even though we pretty much communicate every day, it was only the other day that we were like, oh, yeah, like, why don't we just do a squad cast? So we're going to have one coming up for you soon. We're just navigating our breaks and travel and stuff like that. But we're going to definitely partner officially on camera. But stick taps to Seth. You've been a huge help. And hopefully, for those of you who are the everydayers and OGers, you can see that that Seth is definitely helping keep this engine running smooth. You know. And then, of course, like I said, I have a faux pas where <laughs> I schedule the show wrong. So my bad, my bad. That was not the producer. That was all me. But thank you, Seth. And go check out Locked On Minnesota Wild after you listen to Locked On Kraken, which, of course, is your first listen every single day. The Seattle Kraken in December. How are we going to close out 2024? Hopefully with a 500 or better record. That's for dang sure. But let's bring this up on the screen for those on YouTube. Hey, YouTubers, thanks as always for subscribing. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you do that. Also hit the notifications so that whenever I post, you know when the latest content is up. In December, open on the road again, Carolina. New York Islanders, New Jersey Devils, another back-to-back -back on uh, with the Devils uh, being that second game. Then a, a day break before we play the Rangers on the road. So just getting that East Coast trip out of the way. Come home to a four-game homestand, Florida, Boston, Tampa Bay, and Ottawa. Hit the road again to take on Chicago the Vegas Golden Knights, the Colorado Avalanche, and the Vancouver Canucks before welcoming Utah to the Pacific Northwest for the first time under their new name at the end of the year. All right, here's what we need to know about the schedule regarding the numbers. So the Seattle Kraken once again will play a decent amount of playoff teams they play six in a row in December, nine total, and they play seven playoff teams from 2024, seven playoff teams in October and November. So yeah, by the time we wrap up these eight away games and five home games, I think we're going to have a good sense of where the Seattle Kraken are. We're probably going to find that out quite honestly in the middle of November. Um, early returns and how we can hang with teams who, again, fought and clawed their way to the playoffs last season. That doesn't always guarantee, <laughs> hey, we know, that doesn't always guarantee a team is going to make the playoffs in the following season. But it's just one of those things that's easy enough for us to gauge. Um, but again, we don't know what these teams are going to look like. I mentioned Utah. We're going to get the first look at Utah in December. And remember, we talked about this on yesterday's episode, or if you haven't listened to that, go listen to that. But fourth on the most improved list per The Athletic. Again, as a reminder, this sorry, spoiler alert, if you haven't listened to Thursday's episode. Um, spoiler alert, the Seattle Kraken are number seven on that list and about 30 ranking points away from the number one team. So go check that out. So again, I think we're really going to know what Dan's philosophy is and if it's really working. So now to my game of the month. I was tempted to go with the back-to-back -back again, that East Coast trip, but I'm actually going to go with December 10th. That is the game I'm circling in December. It is going to be our first look at the Florida Panthers, the Stanley Cup champion Florida Panthers coming to Climate Pledge Arena. Montour will see some of his buddies. And uh, I think it's a tough schedule, roughly, you know, comparative on paper um, for the Seattle Kraken. And, and to have this game in December, I think hopefully the guys will be really juiced up for it. That being said, they could also be fatigued. It's, you know, it's... I don't know if it's like a gauntlet, so to speak, but it can be tough for a team that's trying to prove that we can be a playoff team again. And then the next thing that we want to prove is that we can be a playoff team with consistency. This, yeah, I think December 10th in this month 
is the game that I'm circling. But also, I think the first three months of the season, right, will be well into the 100 days, the first 100 days of Dan Bilesma. You know, how do we measure up? That's what I'm going to be looking for. How do we measure up against these teams? That is our show. That is the week of Locked on Kraken. We got there. I got to a whole new city. And here we are once again on a Friday episode of Locked on Kraken. Be kind to yourselves. Be kind to one another. And don't forget, we hold fast. We stay true. And of course, loud and proud. We say always and forever, let's go Kraken. I'll catch you on the next episode. Peace out, everybody. I'll catch you on the next episode. Peace out, everybody. Have a good weekend. Don't forget to listen to the other show, Thursday's show. It's a good one. Don't want to miss it.